Week two has no team without a loss and a six-way tie for first. Time to see which teams will hold on to that spot at the top and who will falter. Optic Gaming hope to hold on to first. We'll see if they can pick up another win against FlyQuest, who entered the studio today hungry for their first win of the split. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NALCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we review some of the surprises of the split so far and shine a spotlight on the league's most ferocious rivalries until the timer reaches zero and we jump into Champion Select. Why don't we kick things off by looking at the schedule presented by Jersey Mike Subs. First up, FlyQuest look to pick up their first win of the split over Optic Gaming. Later on, Team Liquid and TSM square off on Summoner's Rift with Echo Fox versus Golden Guardians to wrap up the day. If you're looking for a sub above during our games, visit a Jersey Mike's near you or order online at jerseymikes.com. And be sure to check in later in the split for ways to earn in-game rewards like Hextech Chess, Skins, and RP when you order online. If we turn to the standings, though, we see that clump of teams at 2-1 and one with Golden Guardians, Optic, and Clutch Gaming tied alongside Echo Fox, TSM, and Team Liquid. Looking at where all the teams rank, what are the biggest surprises coming into day two for the two of you guys? The six-way tie for first, the fact that we have no undefeated teams, and then the fact that Golden Guardians and Optic are up there. So to me, Golden Guardians is a slightly bigger surprise than Optic uh, based on the fact that they lost their very first game against Optic, but then beat Team Liquid and C9 back-to-back, -back, with Team Liquid being in 22 minutes. And also the manner in which they win, uh, I feel like has a lot been through the side lanes when th people thought maybe Mickey would come in and the only way they'd win is if he popped off. That's the big thing for me is just like when Mickey isn't playing Lulu, he looks pretty good. Uh, that Yasuo game was very impressive yesterday. His Lulu games, not so much, so keep him off those. Let him play this kind of crazy style and continue experimenting a little bit in the meta. I think Golden Guardians is one of these teams that has a lot to improve on, assuming that they can keep putting Mickey with his strong champions in places that make sense. Yeah, you mentioned one of the other surprise two and one teams in Optic Gaming. Let's talk about this squad. They are playing the game their way. I don't think anyone coming into the start of the summer split was like, yeah, Victor and Ziggs, let's see those. But that's what Power Removal played week one, and it looked pretty good for them. And then in week two, he plays that Super Kaisa strategy, gets really far ahead, and is able to win the game for his team. So Power Removal is looking like a beast right now, one of the key members to really watch in the league right now. And then the rest of the team's doing a good job stepping up around him. Yeah, Alorum also got to see his first game. He had been brought over from Echo Fox. They've switched out their support as well, was Lemon Nation. Those changes look to be working for Optic. They said they're going to have more fluidity within their roster at the very end of the spring split. And if they're winning, it's working. Yeah, Lorem, Deathless in his debut here on Optic Gaming yesterday. Cloud9, one of the other teams I want to talk about here. Of course, the roster situation is a big talk of the town, as well as the record they now sit at. It's definitely something where you want to talk about how Keith and Zazel and Golden Glue are doing, but there's this giant elephant in the room where it's like, why am I seeing them instead of the other guys? Where's Jensen and Sneaky and all that and so it makes it a little hard to take an objective look at this team because you're always comparing them to their academy squad so it's a bit of a tough one to talk about but I think a lot of them have done acceptably in their kind of premiere. I agree I don't think you point to any individual and say he's the reason they're one and two right but they are one and two they've had what looks to be one of the easier schedules even though we do have a lot of parity in the NALCS and even if they were winning even if they were two and one I would still be asking the question almost every week, when is Jensen coming back? Right. When is Sneaky coming back? Because these guys aren't just average players that are sitting on the bench. These are world's quarter finalists. These are first and second team, all NALCS, year over year. It is still crazy that they're on the bench. Yes, they have their own internal things. Jack's come out and been fairly transparent. He says they were benched for some attitude issues. And because, honestly, these guys, Golden Glue, Keith, and Zazel, have been pretty good. And right. you want to give them a chance, but it is still something that we need to continue to ask the question. Right. Benefit of the doubt says that the org is doing what they feel or know is best mm -hmm. for the team in this moment, but there's that forever little voice in the back mm -hmm. of the head that's saying, could they be 3-0 and if those star players People were always gonna in the lineup? Now, one player that has been excelling, though, for the C9 squad on that new roster is Golden Glue. Finally, we see the scrim Golden God that we've been hearing about for feels like two years since yeah. Bjergsen hyped him up as his primary practice opponent. And he's been popping off. He's got a number of solo kills thus far in the games, huge damage contributions, has really good CS per minute numbers, and has been contributing very largely in all their wins, and even in their losses has been a big factor. Yeah, and I think it's super interesting as well when you're talking about which C9 players are going to be starting going forward because Golden Glue and Zazel work very well off of each other from a communication standpoint. And then Zazel and Keith have the synergy, whereas Sneaky and Smoothie have synergy. So I'm wondering if C9, when 
when and if they do start switching back, like what are they actually going to be doing? Are right. they going to swap in Blabber and Jensen at the same time because all they do is duo queue together and have played in the academy? I'm really curious to see what happens. Yeah, there's C9 the question. Too. Is there an amalgamation of C9 where Golden Glue stays in and the bot lane gets swapped back Who out? Knows? Or are they always a trio package? It's really hard to say. Especially because so many of these guys have built their identity together in certain ways. So it's like you said, Keith and Zazel. Well, how about Zazel and Golden Glue in the bot lane? Does that make sense for them? And Jensen in the mid lane? Like, right. it, it, yeah, so mage bot. Yeah, why not? We've seen other teams doing this where they have two tops on their roster. You can do a similar thing with two mid laners. It makes a lot of sense in the meta. It's a very good point. Now, somebody who has been playing <laughs> across all roles in the meta would be the man on Echo Fox, Hooney. Yesterday, playing that Aurelia, the super Aurelia, if you will. Yeah, trying to make history right there. We're counting it There's on the Jack's analyst quest. desk here as a mid lane. He didn't win as the Aurelia smite that was jungle slash And it's mid pretty lane anyway. contest contended yeah. if it is even a mid lane We're having a Aurelia. lot of conversations about what to call the mid lane smite dude who takes jungle and mid. But either way, Huni is continuing to be diverse and versatile. However, he did miss a lot of Aurelia stuns. I think he took a lot of that blame on himself for that loss yesterday since they are putting him in a position to hard carry these games and he was unable to do that yesterday. But just the fact that Echo Fox is willing to put him in all these situations and put so much trust into him makes me think we're going to continue to see some pretty cool things. I mean, and isn't that the superstar mentality that you want on a team in general, let alone yes. in this current meta? A guy who says, give me all the resources, put all mm -hmm. of the responsibility on my shoulders, and then when it doesn't work, accepts that responsibility and says, hey, I misplayed with the resources yes. that were funneled into me. Yeah, I mean, his Aurelia, in terms of game sense and decision-making, still looked really good. He just missed some shots, missed a couple easy, shouldn't have missed. And if he hits them, they get a couple more kills and they can win some more fights. And it's tough to do that, but as a superstar, you also have to be able to look past those mistakes and continue asking for those resources. Now, sometimes when pros return to the stage after a hiatus, they aim to pick up that flashy solo kill or slide in with a cheeky Baron steal to show they've earned their time in the limelight. Then there are the players who look to show up right on time just to say I'm helping. In his game versus Optic, Fung comes to the rescue of Phoenix, who seemed surely dead to the Optic dive. Let's take a look. This is the knockup, but everybody is just standing there. Locks it down. Killer instinct is in. Power B will not oh. go. Here comes the ultimate from Zen. Phoenix is still alive. What a thwart. Fung coming up huge on the play as the sub support. And he goes still in. wants it. There's the in. They say Requiem is down. Oh. No, 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 I think no, he's no, gone. No, I think no, he's no, gone no yeah. matter what. Yeah, oh, Shannon, 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 Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Okay. We're, 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 okay, we're collapsing. Sorry, we're collapsing. I'm playing so. I'm playing so. I'm playing so. Cut this can't die. Cut this can't die. Cut this can't die. He can. He can. He can. He can. He can. He can. It's that. You got it. Nice. Holy moly. Hey, get him to Get him to it. Get him Okay. Nice bang. Man, a lot to parse through in that communication. Oh, he's definitely dead. Then the Chanel comes in, and then they very quickly decide to turn it around. Pretty cool. Yeah, uh, great in-the-moment consideration and communication from the squad. A lot of head scratches there as well. Now, they say the devil is in the details, and for the analyst on my far left, he must have thought that was a challenge. Time for me to hand it over for Jat Stats. Let's go to the Telestrator, man. Let's do it. <sighs> this is probably my favorite part of the show. Yeah, when it has your name in it, and it's your chance. Mark? Yeah. Still not. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days, Mark, we're going to get you to dance with us. You got to change the music up. I think it's different. Listen. <laughs> oh, it's not with us today. Oh, it wasn't with us today. They changed it. Oh, my goodness. They didn't have the, the bouncing face last week. Not for the, uh, for the end Upgrades. of it all. All right, Jet, Woo! take it away. Uh, yeah, anyway, so there's been a lot of these mid lane funnels things going around, including all that. The person we're taking is mid lane. Mid laners still have 27% of their team's damage on average, this split. However, the lowest damage percent for mid lane is 18.1% damage. Who is this player? We got a multiple choice question for you. There's only four options here. We got Bjergsen, Ryu, Mickey, or Pobelter. One of these guys is 18.1%. Oh, it's multiple choice. Well, that's helpful. Uh, My, I, mm. I'm, go, I'm leaning Mickey because the Lulu games. And well, he only played one Lulu game, right? Uh, he played or two. He, play he got two. smashed both times, both, I believe. Right. Yeah. One was but, against was the Yasuo was hide? No, he built kind of tanky. In yeah, that. he was That's really a good tanky. point there. Uh, I'm going to take Mickey. You can, I don't know if there's someone else you want to try. I mean, Lasan. Are we going to split? We're going to split the vote on this one? It's definitely, it's not, it can't be Bjergsen. So then there's the Ryu played one Lulu as well, what right? Pobolter's and then, played. He's been kind of like right. a, a non Marcus Mickey Dash is. Mickey. Okay, I'm going to go with Ryu. 
you never agree with Mark when he's right. Because it's Mickey. It's, he has it. <laughs> I, I don't know why it happens. I'll like have sound reasoning. Uh, you know why it yeah, is? Because he it's, always it's, suggests that I split it so that we have, yeah, you know, it's cover Papa 50% Belter. of the field. Dis disregard that. Bjergsen was actually second lowest at 18.6%. Ah. Don't look at the graphic. It was Mickey. With a, with I checked the, it last night. Okay. <laughs> I'll, so I'm I'll right. hear if it's I'm you're right. right. You're right. Okay. Okay. You're right. 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 Mark wrong. gets a point. Right. Uh, question number two is kill leader. Very fair questions today. With five more kills than everyone else, who is the kill leader of the NLCS? Do you remember? We, no, we just, we just looked it we up. We just looked it up. All right, give me some time. This to was the, I was watching. Okay, I am not going to lie. We legit just looked and up stats. And the first thing they looked five at was kills. Five minutes before the show started. There's one player with five more kills than anyone else in the league. It was somebody. It was, it was a little surprising. It was a little yeah, surprising. Yeah, that's why I picked it. I picked surprising was stats. Was it Hans? It wasn't Hans. I thought for no, sure you would no. get this one. Oh my God! Be After checking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to so answer. I don't want to answer even because the word. it makes it look even worse. I, mean, right. I could this, reason it out with the other. Make guess. We gotta, we gotta commit All right. together because uh, we looked it up together. <laughs> so we gotta go down together. Go, right. go captain by captain. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who was it? Uh, I'm just gonna go someone random someday. It wasn't someday. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I might, might be. God, no, it definitely wasn't. It's not Hooney. Um, I, it's all right. Ten let's seconds. Just go. You can go like Poe or I don't know. Was it Poe? I don't think it was. Poe. No, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was the DPM, DPM leader. Yeah. He was DPM leader. Right. But uh, producer, tell me, you got to throw I go an with Mark then because we we ride or die together Someday. on this one. Someday, Apollo. It's Apollo. Oh, it's Apollo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's Apollo. Oh yeah. Oh. I actually do remember. I can't Nicest guy in the LCS. Him. That Vlad. Go listen to the LCS lounge from yesterday. Was so and That was actually great. Strength. It was great at lounge, actually. I think their dynamic was amazing. However, question number three. Golden Guardians is two and one. Yeah. They've been in this the league for a split and a couple games now. However, they only have a winning record against one LCS team. This is all-time LCS. Who is the team that Golden Guardians beats more than they lose? Okay, so they, okay, well, they lost to Optic, but they beat TL, and they beat... It it's not to. just a split. It's all-time. Yeah, but it right, has, right, it right, has but, to be one of the But two. it's got to be one of those two teams, right? Because so, they have four wins last split. Unless they technically... They 2 owed someone last right, split, and they haven't played them yet. somebody randomly and haven't played them yet this split. That could be. Did they, I don't like, think randomly 2 owed like, CLG last split when no. CLG was in Struggle City? I don't think so. I think it's TL. I'm going to go with TL. I like that. It's the it's the spring split champions that they have a winning record against. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yeah, hey, that's a good day for Woo! me. All I right. got two. Of them. All right. Uh, good job. I that thought you so get so bad. I, the the Apollo three. one is yeah. Just, we could have. Like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, you could have. The one yeah, that got away. That's one. But oh well. No. I'll take one. Yeah. Thirty-three percent is better than my season or split average from spring. I think I'm willing it is. to bet. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, we got to take a breather after that one. But when we return, Zabatine shares his thoughts on the match today, and we spotlight esports' greatest rivalry. As we go to break, though, we listen in on the tug of war match between Cloud9 and Optic from Week One. The Cloud9 jerseys look exactly like the Origin jerseys when I was playing for Origin. <laughs> no joke. So you know, they they look for me like a relegation team. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, Wait, what? And that's for both sides. How's there so much water here? If we have a Alista, it's good with the lane too. And also we have a one more Diver with the Nocturne. I think and it's from now. So you want to pick from? Yeah, I sure. think Prom's just too good. Sure. Do you want to play mind. Lulu? I don't mind. I think you and should pick something that doesn't damage. Hover Rakan, Hover Rakan. Then, then, then Zix. Hover Rakan and Rakan. Okay. Zix. We, we, we never lost with Zix. They know your bot side. Jungler's probably top side. Around there. Grom can come here as well. Yes, let's go. I'm on the way. Flash. Grom is far. Go, 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 go. Flash all soon. I'm holding. Come to your right, come to your right. Nice, nice. Oh, nice. moving, oh, nice moving. Can you ult me, uh, Ashen? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you no, want no flash, no flash. Okay, they chunked us bottom. I'm moving mid. We're Zen's mid. coming, Zen's coming. Run right, run right, run right. Run right, run right. Shit, no flash, shit, no flash. I feel, I feel. We're fine. Oh, no, yeah, we're on the team. Oh, I'll slowly. You gotta go slow five. You gotta go slow five. Fine. Slowly, guys. Go, just go. I got Shran, I got Shran. Get back, on, 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 on the same side. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We don't have to play for Dragon, guys. We can just take enters. How are we gonna use the Shin Nocturnal? I wanna do something with it. Ah, we could try to get deep. Well, I'm getting a CS lead slowly. We push sides, we get division, and when they go into reclaim, we just fight them. Yeah. Orange bottom, Orange bottom. You guys can fight. Bottom. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Good fight. I'm, I'm building, I'm building. Okay. I have Saya, I have Saya. Ulting Doc, Ulting Doc, Ulting Doc. Don't flash Saya. I'm ulting here. We got Saya. Saya, don't flash. Yeah, he's haunted. He's haunted. Then there's Ender, then there's Ender. I got one. Uh, careful, careful, careful chasing, careful chasing, careful chasing. Okay, they're losing bottom and hip slowly too. This is really good. I can get a banner here. 
How do we want to do lane assignments? We're matching the waves. Yep. Top wave is here. So once you, here. once mid wave crashes, just tell us and we'll push. All right, I'm pushing now. They're losing towers. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, shielding yeah. Just here. Take it, slow, take, it slow. take it slow. I have tag on Ziggs. Yeah, they can't auto here. Ziggs is low. Zaya. Ziggs one HP. Zaya no flash. Zaya's no flash. Zaya is tagged. Zaya is tagged. Can we finish? Don't have to. Careful, careful. In the game. In the game. In the game. All right. Yeah, buddy. Hit the Nexus, guys. Hit the. Nexus! Oh. Hit it, hit it. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Please kill it. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I'm he's, like, he's like, yeah, we won! Yeah, I'm yeah, down the Nexus! Nexus. Cloud9 will rally back to victory and close out their weekend with a win. Currently, my favorite team rivalry will be uh, Cloud9 and Cloud9 Academy. NA versus EU also. It seems like they're always just going at it, and NA has been winning recently, so go NA. Cloud9 versus TSM, the you know huge giants that always win the league. It's always exciting to see them play. Clutch versus TSM, just because Clutch now has TSM's number, and it's fun to see TSM fans be salty. Uh, the favorite player rivalry, uh, I think... Uh, Double it versus Aphromoo. You know, there's a lot of history there, and I, I just love watching them play. Medio Cynic Smithy. Bjergsen versus Double Lift, because they're previous teammates and both very big leaders in the league. Favorite rivalry? It's probably Big versus Quan. It's always rubbing the wrong way that Quan took big spot back in energy. Probably say St. Vicious and Crumbs. Um, they seem to have some heated commentary when they get together. Sneaky in the bench. He's losing really hard. 
I want him to not be on the bench anymore. My favorite league rivalry, uh, Shin versus uh, Zed. There's, it's ninjas, man. I mean, come on. I think it's Teemo versus anyone, because um, Teemo sucks, and, and that's just a known fact. I'm with the last guy. Teemo does suck. Yeah, I was surprised no Bjergsen versus Jensen. They had so many finals matchups, but I guess not in the league. It's kind of hard to have that rivalry. Well, hey, welcome back to the NALCS Countdown. We're about nine minutes away from Champion Select. So before we get there, you were both schooled by the fan predictions yesterday. Double I'm hoping game. that you've changed out your crystal ball and tea leaves for today's matches. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you have predicted for our five scheduled games today. We do have a difference between hey. all of you, finally. In uh, that 100 yeah. Thieves Friend. C9 matchup. Let's go ahead and start there, talking about why you guys chose the picks that you did. I understand week one, 100 Thieves looked terrible, but they said that they went in with a very serious approach in their week. They practiced a lot more about what they are actually going to do in this meta, and I thought they looked a lot, lot better yesterday. Yes, it was against Optic, which you don't want to read too far Flyquest. into. Or FlyQuest, yeah. excuse me. Uh, but either way, the way they dominated and they had really interesting picks while still keeping things within their own wheelhouse, impressed me a lot with a C9 kind of struggling. Despite looking good, they still lose their games. Yeah, I think this is a really tough game to call as well. Even though C9 is one and two, and we're always wondering if they're going to start bringing the main roster back in there, I think they've looked pretty good in their three games. I think there are going to be some LCS jitters. They were talking about before week one that it was about 60% excited, 40% nervous. Mm -hmm. As that gets more towards the lower nervousness, I think they get better, and... It's, I'll, to me, a bit of a toss-up, and I'm just going to say Cloud9. The coin would agree as well, so I got yeah, that going. But you know side. where the coin disagrees? Took my advice from the end of the show yesterday. <laughs> Went Golden, Golden Guardians. Guardians over Echo Fox. We'll swap so gonna that throw that That's out how there. I'm going to beat the coin, right Dash. <laughs> it is, it is. And all right, well, the other matchup I want to talk about is a very big one. It's the T it's Team Liquid versus TSM. You got the perennial powerhouse in TSM up against the reigning champions in Team Liquid. I was surprised you took TSM here, uh, just because while Team Liquid did have that one loss, it feels like a very wide spectrum in between their wins and their losses where it's like okay you int level one on vladimir you lose that game but the other ones they they look very good mechanically and have good drafts so i'm surprised to see you pick tsm but i just think that yeah. their consistent level of play is much higher right now for tsm yeah i don't really know what to make of these teams i think grig has actually looked pretty good uh in for mike young and when you're looking at preseason power rankings at least when we did them on the dive to ranked number one and tsm ranked number two also that's what everyone is expecting to be the final last split these teams have extremely powerful rosters but neither of them have been dominant in the regular season so i think it's a huge matchup and i favored tsm a little bit because i like what grig and bjergsen are doing and i think if they're coordinated they're going to be able to close so you think the tipping point is the mid jungle for tsm yeah i mean i think the tipping point in the game they lost was when bjergsen made that invade in blue buff and sven and mithy got caught down bottom if they keep their cohesion together i think they'll be all right all right there you have it with game one around the corner zabu team believes the orgs upgrades will spell success for them this split I think we were smarter than the Spring Split. We have better facilities. The fact that we actually uh, transferred the academy team from Dallas to Los Angeles to work with them on a daily basis helps us, helps us a lot, sorry. And I'd say, yeah, the player changes as well help us a lot. I think uh, there is very huge talent pool in NA. You just need to dig a little bit, and I'm really happy with the newcomers. So I think, yeah, we have a pretty good start right now. The meta changed every two days, so I can say, yes, I have a good grab to today and tomorrow. You know, it won't be true anymore. So I think we understand some things, but I, I, I don't think there is very big strategic aspect of this meta. It's pretty much like the best player wins in lane. So we understand pretty much how we can win, but I hope it will change, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, France can win the whole World Cup, but they have maybe to step up, step up a little bit. But at least, you know, the results are here, so I'm really happy. Let's go, France. Here at the NALCS Countdown, we keep a suggestion box. And we noticed a recurring theme of pros reminding us that every great sport needs great rivalries. You've got Bird versus Magic. you got Dash versus Dark Dash. you got Flash versus Jadon. Always a beacon of factual reporting and definitely not manufactured drama, we were humbly willing to accommodate in spotlighting League of Legends' greatest rivalry. It's Rivalry Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Get ready for the most anticipated grudge match of the year, Quan versus Big. It all started back before NRG was, was foreign. We were just competing for the spot, and you know, he took my spot. And now I'm gonna take the W next week. He took his spot, and now he's looking for revenge. 
Yeah, I think we played two times. Right? Two times. They played twice. I think either King carries and Flame, or they lose because the bot lane's a joke. At least right now, I think we are like about similar skill level. At the moment, I say I'm like bottom four. That means he's calling big bottom four because he's also bottom four. That's a sick bird. Hashtag sick bird. I wouldn't know, but I know he experiences a lot of failure. I wanna, I mean, I wanna win in any game, but yeah, I wanna win versus him too. Pure unfiltered rage. I forgot Santorin's a walking ward. Caught in the crossfire. Big's like my key stuff right now. He has a bottom four. Kind of sad. Definitely not edited. Zach was like, now yeah, let's create this fake rivalry. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I'm all in, yo. All in. Quan versus Big. How can Whoa. you support Whoa. Big? He's a bully jet. Big is just better. I understand that you like supporting the wrong thing when you're choosing between two. That's why you're in the Quan jersey. Got You've it. had some bad yeah. takes before, but okay. this is oh, really? unprecedented. We're on air, by bad. the way. Just let's just show some composure here, and let's let the players settle it with their performance on stage, shall we? Big's better. I mean, clearly, Mark, you are Team Quan, and over here we got Team. You can't Big. even put the jersey on properly. I'm supporting my person. You're just supporting I'm a team. A big jersey. It's yeah, very yeah, keep facing that yeah, way. The, face the less I see of your look. face, the better. I mean, look, if you want to weigh in at home on this very large. Rivalry big versus Quan, please feel free to do so because clearly we have a divided desk in here. But I mean, is there any very more specific reason why you're say hashtag Quan over hashtag big? I mean, you could see there, Quan is a great guy. Mm -hmm. All right. I like supporting he good called people. Big bottom four. He out of necessity, he was getting attacked. I mean, if you come at him, he's gotta defend himself, but he didn't want big to go out and be a jerk. What about big over here? Why, why? You always want to make the first move. Big made the first move. Mm. He's the All aggressor. Right. All right, well, we only got two minutes until champion select, so let me gather your win conditions for this first game between FlyQuest and Optic. Mark, as you're a Quan supporter, I'm going to give you FlyQuest win conditions. Hit me with it. Yeah, absolutely. Don't go for a funnel strat. Don't go for any late game stuff. Pick a level two jungler and go aggressive at these guys. Optic has looked pretty good. I'll give him that in the late game. Uh, but I don't want them to get there. So get aggressive and get aggressive early on. All right, Jet, what's the response here for Optic being the big supporter? I think when Optic loses, it's because they get split pushed a little bit too much and poked out and choked out of the game. So if they take strong initiation, that's one of the biggest things for them. Since Power Beeble is usually pretty strong, Arrow is usually pretty strong, it actually lets them get to team fights. So that's what they need to do. So is Big the initiator, though? <laughs> is it something like a. Of course. Oh, big can't initiate. And he's going to be oh. Big can't initiate. Well, clearly there's Quan. more dissension on the desk here, ladies and gentlemen. But as we narrow in, to game one. It is time for us to throw it out to the casters in the battle arena for the call. Thank you, Dash, and welcome for game one of the day. I am Julian Patriot Time God, joined by my longtime rival turned ally, Watch Sam Kirby Harming Kensler. Well, we're about to get ourselves into champ select for what is a very heated matchup, both between these two teams and between <laughs> these two support players. Yeah, super excited to see these guys go head to head. Uh, but honestly, Looking at these two teams as well, there have been some patterns emerging uh, if you just do a, like a little bit of quick analysis. And FlyQuest, you know, they've had a couple of repeat losses to Mundo. One of them was actually to Alltech swapping top and playing the Mundo. Um, but there are some key picks here uh, that Optic may be looking at. Whereas from the side of FlyQuest, if you're looking at the Optic picks, um, there are definitely uh, some stuff in the bottom lane there where uh, they've actually played only Marksman for Arrow. Uh, whereas Turtle is definitely branching out. You know, he's always been a kind of a fill player, so he's playing a lot more of the mages and kind of embracing the new meta more. Uh, but I think if you're FlyQuest, you target the marksman and put arrow on something else because it doesn't seem like Optic have, you know, kind of embraced the, the changes in the bottom line. It is interesting to see which teams are kind of choosing to do what. Some teams are just taking the path they know better and kind of refining that. Optic are cool that they have some refinement. That man on your screen, Power of Evil, certainly pull, plays a lot of champions that not all mid laners play. But uh, certainly fun to see. I think Fly have been versatile, just maybe trying to stitch a few more things together and find a bit more consistency. But we'll find out what happens in the draft as